We've got five Microsoft O days in the wild, and I'm in Germany. Let's talk about it on the Patch Report. Hello, everyone. I'm Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Zero Day Initiative, and of course, our Chief Patch Wrangler. We are here with another patch report for May 2025. Got a lot to cover, a late re release from Adobe. Thank you very much, Adobe, for coming out late. Everyone was waiting on you. But uh, lots to talk about, uh, including quite a few O-Days in the wild from Microsoft. So let's jump into the Adobe release first. We've got 13 bulletins, but it's only 40 CVEs. A lot of little stuff here. The only one you really need to fret over is gonna be uh, Cold Fusion. That was patched last month as well. And now we have eight more CVEs in that. And Adobe still listed as priority one, even though there are no active attacks. So it's a little concerning to me that we have Cold Fusion back to back. And again, it's priority one. I don't know. Um, if you're running Cold Fusion, uh, that's time to just start thinking about migrating to something new. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a little bit long in the tooth, as one might say. So maybe, and I'm not saying leave it immediately. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying maybe start thinking of a migration plan to something modern. We'll just go with that. Uh, everything else is priority three. Every, none of these are under active attack or publicly known at the time of release. So let's talk about Microsoft. We have 75 new CVEs in the normal components. Uh, I do want to point out one component, which is Nuance, a power scribe never heard of it before. It turns out it's like radiology recording or something. So check that one out. Uh, but yeah, so uh, like I said, 12 are rated critical, normal components, overall not a great release, not a huge release. However, comma, we got five CVEs under active exploit. And let's start with the scripting memory engine corruption vulnerability. Scribe, sorry, scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Sure. Um, this is fun because it forces Edge into IE compatibility mode, so the ghost of IE still haunts us. You would think this would be an unlikely one to actually see exploited if you were to just read it, but these are the tricks that attackers actually pull, and yeah, it's being used in the wild. Next up, we got two CVEs here that are both privilege escalation in the common log file system CLFS. If that sounds familiar to you, it's because last month there was also a bug in the wild being actively exploited in CLFS. And earlier this year, there was a bug being exploited in the wild in CLFS. Set. CLFS. Now, I don't want to say these patches are bad necessarily, but seeing four of these exploited in six months makes me think maybe there's a patch quality issue. Uh, if the same component keeps getting beat up time after time after time, maybe it's time to think about how you're testing that particular patch to uh, exercise whether or not it's effective. Speaking of effective, here's another ancillary function driver bug, uh, also a privilege escalation, AFD.sys. That's a very interesting backstory if you ever really get into it with an old timer from Microsoft. But again, we saw this patched earlier this year um, back in February, it was being actively exploited. So, man, patch quality, it's hard. Uh, all of the, both of these are privilege escalations. They allow you to execute code at the system. It's gonna pair up with an RCE. So once you're executing code a system, you're executing your code execution a system, taking over uh, a whole system. It's the same one for the uh, desktop Windows manager, which is something I wouldn't expect to see exploited in the wild either, but here we are. So another bug. Uh, being exploited in the wild as a privesque. So you can take a look at the uh, table for all of the things in the release. Uh, two are, ooh, that's an interesting little uh, nugget right there. It runs right over into the critical side. Um, nothing horribly outstanding. When you look at the other critical bugs though, as we get down here into the write-up, um, the one thing that stands out to me immediately is there's two bugs in Office that are listed as critical. That means the preview pane is an attack vector. And this time, Microsoft does not say uh, that user interaction is required. So it's full on preview pane, you don't click nothing, boom, code execution. So there you go. Uh, I also noticed some CVSS 10 bugs and some nine that are really high. 
hang on to your horses. Those are all bugs that Microsoft is already uh, taken care of, and they're just documenting them now. Scary. Yeah, definitely scary, but no user interaction or no user action required at this point. Um, there's uh, the Nuance Power Scribe, which I said. Um, that one's new, but apparently it will allow you to essentially read everything that you're doing with radiology reporting, which, as you might expect, has a lot of PII in it. Uh, and there's some uh, remote desktop clients, but they're not as likely because you have to connect to a malicious remote desktop server. Um, and the virtual bus one requires authentication. All right, looking at the other code exec bugs, um, man, Excel's having a month. I mean, there's a bunch of Excel bugs here that are just getting hammered. Uh, and a few other ones too. There's a PowerPoint and some Office one, open and own. You know, you open a malicious Excel document, boom, code execution at the logged on user level. So another reason to not do everyday tasks as admin. Um, there's command injection in Visual Studio. Interesting. Remote desktop services bug looks a little interesting at first, but it requires some unusual things to be actually exploited, which is that you, the admin has to either stop or restart the service. So that's kind of curious, but I, I didn't take the time to look back over the last year or so to see if there were any RDS DOS bugs that you could combine with it. Ooh, there's a thought, but uh, yeah. And then there's some SharePoint bugs getting fixed, which is interesting because in two days we hit Pwn to Own and guess what's a target? That's right, SharePoint. So there are a bunch of people updating their systems tonight. See if their bugs still work because we do have SharePoint entries. And it'll be interesting to see if they survive or not. So we'll look at that. Um, we've already talked about some critical EOP bugs. Uh, there's a bunch more in this release. Almost all of them just lead to system level code execution. And from an exploit perspective, yes, that's what you want. From a let's talk about bugs perspective, got to be honest, it's kind of boring. So there's not a whole much we can do with it. Uh, the Document Intelligence Studio on-prem, um, that clocks in at a 9.8 <clears throat> CVSS. That's a little interesting. Um, and it allows the attacker to download the content of the parent folder of a mounted path. So normally you shouldn't be able to do that. This will let you, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, we've got a couple bugs that allow file deletion. Have we, as we've seen, if you can target a specific file to delete, you can leverage that into, uh, you know, privilege escalation. And finally, if you are running um, Azure Health Services, you're going to need to really take a look at that and see whether or not you were notified uh, and it can take extra actions. Um, so you got to work extra to resolve that. Definitely take a look at the bulletin and make sure that you understand all of the all of the bugs there and whether or not you are actually impacted by that. We got two security feature bypasses this month. Uh, one is in URL mod, which allows you to bypass Office Protected mode, um, and then the other one is in Visual Studio, which bypasses the trusted domain service. Interesting month for info disclosure bugs. They are all just random heaps of memory. That's it. Nothing more targeted, nothing special, just random um, memory leaks. Got two spoofing bugs, the one in Defender for Identity. Uh, it doesn't exactly say what's being spoofed, but I look at the name of the component, which is Defender for Identity, and think, well, maybe you're spoofing someone's identity. Just, just a thought. And uh, the other one is in .NET and Visual Studio. Uh, off is required for that, uh, but essentially you take a a special file, you place it on the system, you wait for a privileged user to access the file, and then you get it. And of course, seven DOS bugs. Again, no information from Microsoft about what, what really is here. Uh, they could deny system to the whatever from the network or locally, be it as it may. So that is it uh, here from Berlin, Germany, as I prepare for Pwn to Own Germany, Pwn to Own Berlin for the first ever time. Super excited about that. Uh, definitely stay tuned to the channel and to our socials for all the results from that, as well as some live streams, which could be interesting. You never know what's gonna happen live. <coughs> Excuse me. The next update Tuesday, Patch Tuesday, will be June 10th, and I will be back in my home office in the familiar confines to bring all of the latest news and information about the Adobe and Microsoft releases at that time. So until then, stay safe and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.